Patricia Gross, welcome to Passion Time. I'm here with Katie Maynard. Uh, Katie has started Pink Petro, which is supposed to help women get into the energy industry, close that gender gap between men and women in the energy sector. And uh, she's been awarded for her business savvy. Um, she worked in BP and she also worked for Shell. Um, she is a marathon runner as well and a mom. So I don't know how she has time to do all these things, but she does. And it's great to have you here with us. Great, it's great awesome. to have you. So my first question to you is a question that I ask everyone, and that is, how did you find your passion and how are you living your passion? That's such a great question. So how did I find my passion? I think it took some time. Uh, and actually, uh, now that I'm in my ripe 40s, I think 40s are way better than 30s. Very and young. 30s very young. were way better than 20s, so know, it just yeah. keeps it does getting, getting better. better. It does get better. Yes. It does. I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but it's... Yeah, it gets better. So yeah, it's a, I, I think time has helped me develop, you know, and, and figure out what I want to do with my life. Uh, and that time has brought good times and it's obviously brought tragedy. Sure. I mean, I've, you know, I've had some health issues over life. Uh, I've had loss, you know, the kinds of things that people Everybody go through, right? right? Yeah. But um, I woke up one day and I said, I really like learning. I mean, I started realizing that, you know, passion, my passion was to learn, to learn new things. Uh, my parents told me I was a curious child, wow. and I am a curious adult. <laughs> wow. So I think I probably, I always had the, an innate passion for learning and, and had curiosity at a, a young age, um, but didn't really realize until I got into the energy industry how uh, the energy industry was my passion. The fact that wow. I joined this very dynamic, um, uh, dynamic sector where we create um, empower the world. We're not having, you and I aren't having this conversation without these lights, the, the cameras, right, the, you know, right. and so I woke up one day and I said, I absolutely love this industry and I want to see more women in it. So right. I decided to form this, this Pink Petro, right? You worked in BP and, uh, and Shell as in, in what capacity? In a, in a safety uh, role. Safety area, okay. So more on the human side. So, you know, oil and gas companies uh, are, uh, are we, we, we manage uh, hydrocarbons, we manage very dangerous things. Um, and one of the, the commitments that the industry has made, obviously, is to protection of people. And so my experience in both Shell and BP were to help leaders understand what does it look like to be safe right? Wow. Why do we make the choices we make? You know, um, we all want to go home safe. Uh, so it was a lot of people uh, work and a lot of engagement, a lot of communications. So my background's actually in communications, communications and right. journalism, so okay. I'm not an engineer okay. by background, but uh, I, didn't, I did not um, uh, bill myself inside these oil companies as a communications expert. Um, I tried to learn the business. I tried to really that, that's where that curiosity right, and that passion right. came and that's what from. You. Yeah, you know, I, at one point a woman um, I worked for said, get on a plane and, and go see what we do, you know, and go work in the field and jump out of, you know, jump you out of helicopters and, <laughs> you know, live on rigs. And so it was fascinating to me until I left the office, you know, I had an office job, you know, as a project manager to kind of start. Um, I hadn't seen and really tasted what it meant to be in an oil and gas company. Right, right. And when I actually lived out in the thick of it and got to stand alongside the men and women that put their, you know, that, that put their lives on the line, honestly, for, for people like you and me to put gas in sure. our car, yes. <laughs> yes. I, it was like this, wow, I've joined this amazing um, sector. I would never want to do anything else than to be a part of this story, you sector. know, the energy sector and the energy story. Um, you, though, decided when you left uh, your last company, take your severance package and create Pink Petro. Why did you feel the need to create Pink Petro? Well, so it's interesting because the, the idea for Pink Petro came on a 777. I was sitting on a flight next to a gentleman who asked me why I wasn't at home with my daughter. What was a... What was a pretty young lady like you doing oh, in a gosh. dark, dangerous oil, oh, you know, gas business, you know, dangerous business? And so I said to myself, How old was this man? Oh, well, you know, easily, yeah, easily, generation, yeah. exactly. But, but it hit me. It said, I said to myself, this 
business has a really tough story. The story of energy is one of the most undervalued and undersold out there. The reputation, you know, we're constantly being bombarded by regulation. I think there's a view that oil companies want to, you know, harm people. You know, we pollute. We're people too, just like you and I. Yeah. You know, and so I thought, what if I could create this place where women could access other women and other men, right? right? And we could speed up the notion of, of closing the gender gap. Social technology allows us to connect with people yes. to get information. Very you go easy. to Facebook, you need a gardener, and in five seconds That's you right. got 20 yes. answers, right? Yes. So I thought, what if we could create a private place where women could find their voice, learn the story of energy, and then tell the story from their perspective? Would that humanize the story? Would that give, sure, right. you know, give the industry a little bit more of a, of a flavor right. as opposed to the constant bombardment, you know, the negative press, you know, all of that. And after my time in my role at BP and at Shell, I realized this is nothing more than culture change, communication. Yes. Yes. And uh, so I started scribbling these ideas down and this man just wanted to talk, gen I mean, he wanted to talk, why do women want to work and why do, and I thought to myself, gosh, could I just put my earphones in, like you know? Dinosaur. Oh, he really was, he really yeah. was. But 20 hours later, because I got stuck next to this guy on a plane for 20 hours, oh, no. you know, I had this idea and it was born. But like any woman, I put that idea in a bag and I said, one day, one day I will write. So I didn't leave intentionally. I knew I wanted to leave BP. I knew that I wanted to do something different. This was right before oil and gas hit its peak in sure. 2014. Right. Um, and I was just cleaning out a bag and I went, oh, this idea. And I socialized the idea to a friend at Halliburton. And then before you know it, oh, you need to do this. You need to do this. Okay. Let, me, let, me, let me support you. And it didn't take very long, but within six weeks, you know, it got out to the news and people were saying, what's Pink Petro and when are you going to get it? launched and so, so what exactly happens at Pink Petrol Networking? Yeah, so it's a community online that helps connect women and okay. men from all over the world. From all over the world. In the energy sector. In the energy sector. Uh, obviously we have more oil and gas members uh, than other parts of the sector, but we're growing in the utility space. We even have some solar and wind and you know alternative, mm -hmm. you know, energy. But I thought this is where the generation is going. This is how we're learning. Yes. This is how we're communicating. This is how we're connecting with people. It doesn't replace what we're doing, you know, having a conversation. But what it does is it suddenly opens up the opportunity for people to get access, remove barriers. Right. Exactly. And I thought this is a this is the place to do this. And we wanted to launch it amidst the downturn so that we could be a resource. Now, what percentage of, of the workforce is female in the energy sector? Do you know? So you we were idea? we were w women were outnumbered four to one. Fortune. Okay, wow, that's quite that was high. prior to the downturn. The downturn, um, we uh, just released a report called Energy 2021, which looks at the workforce. And women and minorities and unre underrepresented groups were hit pretty hard. Um, we lost 450,000, I think, jobs, you know, alone globally. Uh, I think that was a stat as, of, as recent as of uh, July. But um, uh, we haven't been able to assess the current workforce because it we're still in that, you know, that transitional period. But I would imagine that the number is, is greater than four to one. Why why do you feel that women need to be in the energy sector? Why is that? What can women bring to the table, particularly for that well, sector? Well, so first of all, it's it's a very complicated supply chain. Everything we touch has been created from the energy supply chain. You get in your car, you take a plane, uh, your cell phone parts, everything, everything is Almost made. Everything. Yeah, you know, um, fossil fuels advanced mankind, right. which is one of the reasons why I think it's a really cool industry to be in. I mean, to say, tell people that I get to be a part of something like that. I think what women and, and underrepresented groups can do actually is, is, is tell the story differently, is to help people see how what we do is so vitally important. Um, and and help that stigmatism of greed and that stigma, stigmatism of evil and all the things that, yeah. that, that quite frankly, the industry has, you know, really starting to fight just as of recent because of social media, you know. Yeah. 
before we went and got it out of the ground, didn't have to communicate, you know, you just filled up your car, no big deal. But I think women are gonna tell the story different. And I think they're gonna attract new blood into the supply chain and into the workforce so that people hopefully will see it in a different light. All right, Katie Mayer Maynard. I'm gonna pronounce that right. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us. And if people want to connect with Pink Petro, what is the website? It's www.pinkpetro.com. Easy. I know. Katie, thank Pink, you so Pink. much. And you're still running, right? I am not trying to run. Good, I run a but, couple but you of days a week. Four different marathons all over the world, which yes. I admire you. Well, I, I I can't run one block, okay? So <laughs> well, then we're gonna have to get out so, at Memorial yes, Park. Yes. Thank you so, <laughs> so much, Katie. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Fashion Day.